So for most people, uh, the idea of going home is, is wonderful. Uh, if you've ever been abroad for a long time, if you've ever lived abroad, um, if you're there like for a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, maybe a year, when you come home, it's absolutely fantastic. You walk in and like there's the bucket of turf, ah, uh, the turf. Uh, and there's dad's boots or dad's slippers, ah, uh, the slippers. And then you walk in and there's the leaking tap, uh, the dripping tap. Uh, still there, still dripping away, doing its thing. And then there's mom, and there's mom with a cup of tea, fussing over you and telling you you've lost weight. And, uh, you know, and, uh, are you eating enough? Are you getting enough rest? How are they treating you? How's work? And, and then dad comes in, well, how are things? And then you sit down, you have the chats, and, and all the kind of typical things that, that greet you at home, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, home, home is where... <laughs> Home is where you can be yourself. That's, that, that can often be a bad thing, actually, because home tends to be where we kind of let our guard down. <laughs> but anyway, home tends to be like home is just this, is, is this place of security. You know, when we go home, it's 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 familiar. Uh, it's 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 comfortable. You feel accepted and loved, and and people care about you. People are glad to see you. You know, it's 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 a wonderful uh, experience when you go home. And a home, of course, is more than a building. Um, when I entered seminary, my family, we sold the farm at the same time I entered seminary. So the house I grew up in, the house I had all my teenage years in, uh, is now belonging to someone else who sells tires. Uh, and we have another house. So even when I dream of home, I still dream of the house that I grew up in, which now isn't ours. And the, 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 the place I suppose I call home now uh, is actually here. But all, where my parents live is a different house than the one I grew up in. So home in my memory isn't the place, as I say, where my parents live now. But home is still where my folks are. You know, when I go in and there's all that kind of familiar, all the habits, all the smells, all the sounds, especially like when you go, if you go home for Christmas, like, you know, your mom's Christmas pudding or the Christmas cake, it's just got that particular smell that only your mom's Christmas cake has. Anyway, so home is a good thing. And home is what we, we, we long for, ultimately, wherever we are, even in our religious communities. Uh, we would hope that our missions don't just become a mission, that they become home from home, or in our communities, or in, in our families, when one goes and gets married and starts a kind of a new life, that then, that, that should become home. So, kind of, wherever we are, we should be creating home, you know, a place of security, a place of, of love, a refuge also for our kids, or for those entrusted to our care. But, St. John tells us in chapter 14. Uh, it, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful reading, which I, I think we, we could delve into for, for hours. I won't today, anyway. Uh, but he says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. I am going to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. It's, it, it, it's, a, it, it's an astounding thought, it's a stunning thought, that we, we, have, we have a home. We have a home in heaven that we've never seen yet. We will, hopefully, if we, if we get things right. But we have a, a home waiting for us in heaven. So this sense of security and belonging uh, here on earth, it's a place where things are familiar. We're not really familiar with things of heaven yet, but a place of security. That's ultimately what, what this life is about. It's, it's a journey home. It's a journey home. Our life here is a journey home. Our whole lives, everything we do, all, of our, all the decisions that we make should be steps that bring us closer to home. So it's not just that we exist here, we put down our time, we put down our 80 years or 85 years and then we go. Well then, if you're just putting down time, what's, what's the point of being here? What is the actual point? Why? Why be here if it's just to put down time? No, the, the goal is that while here, we step after step, we, we choose heaven. I choose that I, I, I want to go home. I want, I want to engage in this journey. I want to be part of this this great epic story of God's chosen people returning to the promised land. I want to be part of that, and I want to do my bit. Like Jesus has prepared a place for me. I just, I, we were meditating during the week how 
It's a kind of an interesting image. There are many rooms in my father's house. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. So there's Jesus puffing up the pillows and he folds the towel nicely in a round kind of a spirally thing with a little envelope type finish on it and he puts it in the corner of the bed and he's walking out of the room and then he walks back and he just adjusts the angle a little bit. <laughs> you know, he's preparing a place for us. I'm pre- going out preparing a place for you. It's, just, it's, it's a beautiful image. I suppose in reality, how he actually prepares the place for us isn't so much by puffing pillows and hoovering floors and putting a little chocolate on the towel, but how he actually prepares the place for us is, is by dying for us. God prepares a place for us in heaven by washing us clean, by forgiving us our sins, by, by dying on the cross. That's, that's how he prepares the place for us. And so then the, the Eucharist, which is the, the theme of our, of our gospel today, the Eucharist is, is often, is, I think it's, it's so much more than we could ever fathom or imagine. Often, Holy Commu- the name Holy Communion, it becomes often like the name of the thing, okay? So it becomes the name of the thing that we receive at Mass, right? The thing that we receive at Mass is called Holy Communion. Um, it's not really the name of the thing so much as a description of what it means, okay? So uh, just, there's a quotation here from, from Pope Benedict XVI uh, when he was Cardinal Ratzinger. He wrote a book called The Spirit of the Liturgy. Um, I might have mentioned this before. Apologies if, if, if you've heard me explain this before. But he writes, in the Eucharist, a communion takes place that corresponds to the union of man and woman in marriage. Just as they become one flesh, so in communion, we all become one spirit, one person with Christ. Now, I'm not sure if you picked up on the details of that one there, but that's fairly odd at the first reading. Hold on, back up one second. In In the Eucharist, a communion takes place that corresponds to the union of man and woman in marriage. You know what that means? Okay? All right. So what on earth does that have to do with the thing we receive at Mass? How on earth are they related? And not only are they related, but like they're comparable. So this isn't just the thing we receive at Mass. There's something, something a lot deeper going on here. So in the marital embrace, what... In God's plan, in God's wisdom, the, in, in the marital embrace, what happens here is, is an exchange of persons. I give myself to you, you give yourself to me. We do so in, 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 an, act of, in an act of love, an act of selflessness, an act of self-giving. Right? So I, I give myself, it's, it's a gift. I give it myself to you as a gift. You give yourself to me as a gift. I receive your gift, you receive my gift. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an embrace of an exchange of persons. Okay, and this is done then, obviously, within the context of marriage. Why? Because if I'm giving myself to you, but you're not even sure if I'm going to be, if you, if I'm going to be here tomorrow or the day after, the day after that, well, then it's not really a self-gift. It's just, yeah, while you're here, it's grand. But that's, that's not love. That's, if, if there's no guarantee that I'll be around tomorrow, then that's, that's not love. And very quickly, that can actually become use. I use the other person. And that's got nothing to do with love. Nothing. So within the, 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 the sacrament of marriage then, what happens in the marital embrace is an exchange of persons. I give myself to you, you give yourself to me. So what happens in Holy Communion? This is my body given for you. So in Holy Communion, the Lord gives himself to us and actually awaits something from us too, that we <clears throat> would give ourselves to him. And then, then there's this holy communion where I'm in a, I'm in a so it's a, remember, it's a, it's a description rather than a name. I'm in holy communion with God. God has given himself to me. I give myself to him. And so now we're in holy communion. There's a bond formed that's actually comparable to the marital embrace. It's astounding. What, what, what I love about this, this, this uh, single phrase from Pope Benedict, is that it raises marriage to such a high standard. You know what I mean? Like it, it, the marital embrace then, it's, it's an exchange of persons. It's, it's a gift of selflessness, a gift of self-giving, self-effacing love. And then Holy Communion is also not just the thing we receive at Mass, but an, an entrance into or a renewal of a relationship with God in which I give myself to him because he has given himself to me. It's just 
mind-blowing. It's absolutely astounding what happens every time we receive the Holy Eucharist. So to stick those points together then, when I live in, in a Holy Communion with God, well then, what I do, what I choose, what I, how I put down my time during my day, all of these things should be steps towards my journey home to the place that God has prepared for me, to the place, the place that the Lord has prepared for me in heaven, to be with my Father for all eternity. All, all of these things, all of the, the, the menial tasks of my day, everything from changing nappies, cleaning spuds, doing the shopping, hoovering carpets, whatever it is, everything then become, should become an act of love that becomes a step towards heaven. Our whole lives are a journey home. And maybe, I, this, is, this is purely me now, this isn't catechism or anything, because I, I, the catechism doesn't, doesn't say much about this, but maybe it will be the case that when we get into heaven, hopefully, help of God, things might actually be a little more familiar than we thought. Because if we spend our lives living with God and for his greater glory, obviously seeing him unveiled is going to be, again, absolutely mind-blowing. But I should actually know him. If I've been praying to him and adoring him, and asking for his help and listening to his advice for decades, well then when I actually see him in person, it may well be that he's strangely familiar. It's like, it's like I, I've met you somewhere. <laughs> Just can't quite put my, you know, like in some, we should, we should kind of, we should know him. We, again, we, we've, we've never seen him like you see me now. We, well, you won't be seeing Jesus like you see me now. He'd be obviously glorified, but we, we will see him in his glorified body. But, and in, in some strange way, it should be actually, he should be actually kind of, kind of familiar. If, as the Song of Songs says, he's, he's he whom my heart longs for. Well, then when I, when I see him, there should be an actual familiarity, a, 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 a and that will be like just the beginnings of heaven, the beginnings of, of home for all eternity. So we ask the good Lord today to renew our love for the Eucharist, our understanding of this, this relationship that we're called to by receiving Holy Communion, that we may truly enter into this holy communion of persons and engage then in our journey home every day. Amen.